I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace. Harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth. There is one, the all in all. The truth that makes me free to be. I heed its every call. Welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. This is Lifeline. I'm your moderator, host, Sandra Cooper, and it's my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you. I also have with us this evening our pastor, Reverend John, and a very, very special guest, and I'll introduce uh, her in a little bit. But just to welcome you here to this wonderful moment of, of liberty, love, and laughter as we have our Lifeline and answer to some of the challenge we've been, challenges we've been having in this very special time as we look at how to thrive and remain spiritually focused during these very extraordinary times. So as we always do, we begin with prayer. And I'd like to invite our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to start us off with God. Thank you, Sandy. And it's a joy to add my own words of welcome to you all. And to our special guest, or guests, actually, we have two that are a little surprise sitting off to her right, which you will, you will find out in a little while. But let us just begin, as Sandy says, as all things begin, with the infinite invisible we call God. And so we recognize one presence, one power, one infinite intelligence, one love, one heart one oneness, God. And we know that this one, which is everywhere equally evenly present throughout all of creation, is radiantly present wherever we are on this call. It is filling our hearts, our minds, our consciousness, our homes, our offices, wherever we are at this moment. All of God in all its beauty is right there. And that infinite mind fills our consciousness with every idea we require to continue this glorious journey of life and light and truth into greater than we have ever experienced before. I know for our guest speaker that her tongue is tipped with celestial fire and her mind is ablaze with the wisdom of the ages as she leads us in this conversation about the science of mind and spirituality as a path for women. This is the truth which I celebrate and release to law, knowing that it cannot return to us void and must fulfill that whereunto it is spoken. And we give thanks. We truly give thanks that this is so, as together we say, and so, and it, so it is. is. Thank you so much, Reverend John. And you know, friends, uh, we've been having this exercise we call Lifeline since uh, I think maybe April or May of 2020 as a, a, you know, just to, just to create an opportunity to, to, you know, share some spiritual tools and strategies so that we can rise above the challenges that um, some of us might be facing. And also to, to help to support every, each and every one of us to shift from uh, fear-based thinking to faith-based thinking. And our speaker this evening, um, 
is bringing us a very, very special message. This is the last um, day in what we celebrate as International Women's Month. And we would like to just look at some of the, um, what, how can we use the science of mind and spirit to, to, to deepen our ability to embrace and engage and rise above you know, the external and live from the inside out. So our special guest this evening is the founding and senior minister of Heart and Soul Center of Light, a Centers for Spiritual Living affiliate in Oakland, California. Since its 2009 launch, she has honed HSCL into a loving, vibrant, world-class teaching and empowerment ministry. In 2017, and again in 2020, she was elected to the Centers for Spiritual Living Minister Council and has served as co-chair for four of the past five years. With a powerful capacity to inspire, teach, and lead, Dr. Andre touches hearts and empowers individuals to believe in greater possibilities and offers practical tools and roadmaps for personal transformation. Absolutely. She ignites audiences with her intelligence, humor, and radiance. With a lifetime dedicated to communication, meaningful connection, and transformation, she has honed a distinct voice that sheds light on life's biggest challenges, opening doors to an elevated consciousness. Mm. She's a published author of Embracing Wholeness, Living in Spiritual Congruence, and pens a monthly column from the inside out. That's the title of the column, From the Inside Out, for Science of Mind magazine. Our guest is Reverend Dr. Andre Earl. And this evening, I want us to, to start off, um, Dr. Andre, with um, a question. In the Science of Mind magazine um, in February 2020, in an interview with um, three other women, Dr. Crystal Davis, Tracy Brown, and Reverend Cynthia James, uh, you spoke about your experience on this teaching. And you said that you came to the teaching in the early eighties, feeling very broken and fearful. And that you, as you learned how to understand and apply the principles that it transformed, they all transformed your life. Can you tell us a little bit to start us off about, about the path, the science of mind path that you took and how did it facilitate your own personal transformation? Absolutely. First, let me just say thank you and acknowledge just how honored I am to be invited and to have this opportunity and to know that if I had the financial wherewithal, I would just pay you, Sandy and Reverend John to say my name, <laughs> just, <laughs> just to have the two of you lilt my name would be, I would have you on the payroll, just call have the have people heart. call you so they could hear my name from <laughs> from you so i couldn't i had to just tell you because i was here just basking in the wonder of all of this and what a pleasure it is it feels like out of my my affinity and respect for reverend john this feels uh. like you know such a long time coming because i've wanted to play with you and who knew that it would be a virtual playpen, you know, that we would have this opportunity. And your notion of lifeline really is the perfect segue to my life experience. It is oh. true that when I came to this teaching in, I think it was 1982, I, it was a time that I describe as when I lived under the bed when I was so depressed and could not, from where I was there at that time, I could not imagine, I couldn't even see the next week. You know, it was so difficult. It was just, um, 
It was just a difficult, difficult emotional time for me. And um, anybody who knows me knows that I'm a morning person and there's no point in trying to have conversation with me at night. But well, welcome to the I, I, was, I was so depressed that I was sleeping days and up nights. And so I caught Rev. Reverend Terry Cole Whitaker on television mm. because she had, you know, the inexpensive time, which was the wee hours of the morning. And I caught her and I remember, I recall kind of lifting up on my elbows. She was talking about use, what I remember distinctly was the use of affirmations. And I remember kind of trying to find something to write on. You know, and I got an affirmation and I just devoured it. I was so desperate for a lifeline. And that it turned out to be that that was the first and only time I have written to a ministry. You know, I kind of come from, you know, a family and consciousness and an upbringing that would just have that. You don't write to ministries. First of all, what are ministries doing on TV and blah, 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 all of that? And I crossed that chasm of doubt and criticism and judgment to actually write. And they sent me more affirmations and I began tithing and giving. And I, you know, it just transformed my life. From there, I started taking classes. She had a re remote classes uh, in San Francisco. So I was across the Bay taking classes. When those stopped, I started commuting to La Jolla from Oakland on oh, Friday yeah. afternoon to be there for a Saturday morning classes. And I was just devouring it, swallowing it whole and using it. And it was transforming my life or I would not have done it. I would not have continued. I never would have made those trips across the Bay Bridge even, let alone driving to Southern California for 10 consecutive weeks to take a class. And I did that. And you, I would only do that because it was beneficial to me, you know, like it was indeed a lifeline. hot coals. I beg your pardon, Tom. Huh? It was indeed a lifeline. It was indeed a lifeline. Oh, exactly. It was. And, it, you know, I guess there's a part of me, just my ego that would, would love to tell the story as if, and that was the last time I've never experienced, you know, since I've come into this teaching, I've never had not a moment of depression or feeling less than or any trouble, but that is not my life story. So mm -hmm. I have had to reach back and forward and out and up and around and through for a lifeline for many times. And I have mm. always found it in principle. Wow. Um, I, you know, I know there are people watching, listening, who are not as forgetful, not as, I guess, absent minded that I can do all the study I've done and all the practice I've done and have nerve enough to teach it, even as I endeavor to practice. And yet there are those moments when I forget and I am laid out in fetal position, just like I don't know. The blessing mm. is, though, in due time, I come to myself. Mm. And I return to an unawareness of truth. And it's mine to be and do and thus have. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Awesome. So, so yeah. I'm hearing how, how transformational this teaching has been for you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and, and you've moved from being depressed to now leading a church. Yes. You know, that's, that's quite a, a move. What are some of the milestones you had along the way? You know, Sandy, I'm not even sure that we can just it kind of, uh, kind of put a frame around that time as just depressed. Mm -hmm. I was in just a bad way. Mm. And depression was one of the symptoms. Mm. You know, I lost my way. I just, I forgot, I could not access of my own being. I just could not access the truth that I had, I'd known it. I know I'd known it. I'd had much success in my life. And in that moment, my life still ha was successful, you yes. know, financially. But I was in a bad way. 
and so what is known as the dark night of the soul it was the dark night and week and month (laughs) of the soul it absolutely was and i'm so grateful for this lifeline so you know when you when you inquire about milestones i think to be absolutely transparent i am presently going through a major relationship tr- challenge not romantic but it's the the relationship devolved in a way that caught me off guard and i around that relationship, not in the totality of my life, I forgot the truth. It was like I couldn't quite access it as I as I looked at the person, as I thought about the person, as I interacted. It was as if there was a shield, a, a block. And mm-hmm. so I am still yet coming to myself and then even professionally where that relationships touches um, the professional aspect, I am working it out. There's some there. I have had some embarrassment about that because I'd love for my story to be that, you know, life happens and I rise to it above it, you know, that I handle it because what I'm a teacher and I practice this. And my truth is that I fall and sometimes I am challenged to get up. But, but let but me just say, makes... once I get up though, <laughs> and, and so far I've always gotten up, you know, and right now I'm up, maybe up on one knee, you know what I mean? In, in that well, process see, of like getting I, up. I must say, Dr. Andre, that, that for me, that makes you just tailor-made for teaching. Because mm-hmm. when when someone comes to you and says, I have a relationship problem or I'm, I'm face down in the mud. I can't even see the blue skies. You have been there. Oh, Lord, yes. <laughs> um, in, you know, wearing many hats or maybe yes. no hats. And no yes. Shoes. And <laughs> so you mud. speak. You know, I just love your authenticity because, because a lot of times people expect us as ministers, speaking as a minister, not to have any issues. Oh. And not to, to have dark nights. Of the oh. you, know, you, you must always be, you know. John the Beloved, you know, and sometimes Mm -mm. I don't feel so beloved. Right. So uh, my question for you is because I regard you as one of of our luminaries in this movement of whatever gender, you know, (laughs) and and so my, I've been thinking about this evening, I have been wondering if there is anything in particular about the science of mind that has really grabbed you uh, when you have on your, your female hat as a woman, is there anything about the teaching that, that is of particular significance, um, given the fact that you are a woman and going through, or uh, from time to time experiencing the vicissitudes of, of life, the merry-go-round, the, the roller coaster, whatever you want to say. Right. I think the simple answer, John, is yes. It's, it's, it's definitely yes. I, when I'm in, I'm in. So when I was a part of a more traditional ministry, in fact, it was Methodism. I was a lay leader there. You've always and been a leader, yes. What, what I find in contrast is that this teaching is more accessible to the whole me. I feel ah, like nice. there's not a part of me nice. that I have nice. to, to subjugate or pretend as if that's not true about me okay okay you know so it embraces so, the divine feminine of you but also the sacred masculine because you absolutely. because we are both absolutely and my work of course is my life work is making sure that they are friends my divine feminine and my divine masculine making certain absolutely. that they absolutely. are friends and living coherently and cohesively yes you know, well, in the, peace the, and in love, and that's not that, always the case. Indeed. That yeah. just reminds me that today is the International Day of um, uh, transgender. Visible Transgender, uh-huh. uh, celebrating uh, people who have transgendered and, and, and are willing to stand up and be counted. And I yeah. think that's so wonderful because as a, as a, as a movement, the, the, the yeah. Centers of Spiritual Living embraces all people, all genders, all um, races, all belief systems. Uh, um, so 
you just that just came to me as you were speaking. So I that's, wanted to honor that. That's perfect. I I agree with you. I think we we have our work to do as an organization. We mm -hmm. really do. I, I'm grateful that that at least at the foundation level, at the base mm -hmm. level, that today there was from from our spiritual leader a message around that. Yes, and I'm indeed. grateful to be a part of an organization that has that, that is not that is not fork tongued around it, yes. you know, pretending yes. in a public face and then having a private face that is entirely different. Yes, I think we, we to be transparent, I think we have work to do to ensure that the public message that is inclusive and accepting finds representation in our actions consistently. I'm not Wonderful. clear that we're there. Yes, I feel well, we're like working we at on least it. we're working on that. Exactly. Can I, can I ask you at your center, is your, is your, what is the balance of, of men and women? Are you predominantly female? And the, the churches here in Jamaica, the women carry it, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Everywhere. I, mean, I don't know if there's any place that that's you know. not true, but it is you, certainly true for heart and well, soul. Somebody said women hold up half the world, but they actually... It, uh, 51 percent of the world's population but they hold the free quarter of the sky <laughs> absolutely it is true about us yes um, yes and and considering that we have such a, a a role to play as as mothers as um caregivers in many instances and you know if we look at the statistics here in jamaica we find a large number of our our leaders are women but th there is just that that glass ceiling that still exists um and above that the men still run the show but you know our women are are being they're running organizations they are managing the home they're mothering children they're in the schools they're in the churches we, we are everywhere yes. how can we take advantage of the how can we use the science of mind as a as a teaching, science of mind and spirit. As a tool. <laughs> yes, to yeah, affect yeah. Um, some, of, some of the social change because women have been oppressed and beaten and abused for centuries. Yeah. How can we rise up above, above that history to affect some greater social change? Yeah, I think for what... Hmm, this is not coming from a place of science of mind doctrine. This is just off my heart. I believe that the female spirit is naturally, innately aligned with this teaching, with this truth teaching. Mm -hmm. that, I, I, I believe that. I think that 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 the that our nature, our very nature, aligns with, the Christian Christian. Aligns with it and recognizes the truth in it. Mm. However, I think culturally politically, socially, there are so many systems in place that distract us and encourage us to behave in, in ways that are not consistent with that. So my sense mm. is that it's really about unlearning some things, mm. trusting our intuition, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trusting our intuition, mm -hmm. um, kind of in this unlearning, retraining ourselves to trust our intuition, retraining ourselves to believe in our worth beyond the typical ways that we that it would tend to come up in the pages of Cosmo magazine, Cosmopolitan yeah. magazine, or something. Indeed, you know? indeed. But indeed. To, to to really have a sense of of our innate worth. And that the planet requires our presence. You know, life requires your presence. Say it again. The what? Life. Life, life exactly. Requires your presence. It requires it. You are the womb of creation. So we have been home. made to believe, though, Reverend John. What you're saying is true. We are the womb of creation, but we have been made to believe the 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 um what's what's propaganda? The propaganda yep. is that it isn't us. Our wisdom mm -hmm. is spoken through other yeah. figureheads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we have encouraged that. Mm -hmm. 
We have encouraged that to whisper on the side. I just, oh, this is so, this is such an odd example. <laughs> but you remember when, when the United States had as president uh, Reagan, Yes. Ronald Reagan was president and Nancy Reagan sat next to him and they posed a question and she said, we're doing the best we can to him. And then he said aloud, now the, the mic picked up her giving him the words to say, <laughs> he said it, but for there's not that. a woman, there's not a professional woman who has not been around a table where ideas are shared where the, a female has given the idea, and then when the male repeats it, it's a new idea. It mm. is, it, it, we could call it a phenomenon. I mean, I have just sat in rooms with my eyes bucked with just how consistent that yes. is. So I right. think as we begin to, to honor and know that we have a right, a God-given right, Yes. B. And to take up space. Yes. And to be well, one of the things you know, that I mean, we'll do our, it. our founding minister in Jamaica of the Temple of Light was Reverend Dr. Elma Lumsden, um, whom I believe you, uh, you met. I have heard of her, yes. And when Dr. Elma came back to Jamaica and decided to start teaching this teaching, and then she became a minister, women ministers were unheard of. Yeah. Were unheard of when when my best friend in 1981 said john you're about to come to this church i have discovered that it's got a woman minister and it's, you know everybody's eyes are on stocks but she laughs at her own jokes and she is the embodiment of wisdom and that was a first i mean people talk about mary mary, mary baker, baker Eddie. Um, Eddie, mm -hmm. you know founding the, the um um christian course, science christian mm -hmm. science mm -hmm. And she was the first woman um, founder of a major religion in the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. Here in the Caribbean, women ministers were unheard of. Mm -hmm. And when somebody said to Reverend Emma, do you think Jamaica is ready for this teaching? She said, I'm going to find out. Mm -hmm. And so she did. Yeah. She just went out in faith. Yeah. And I would say, and I applied to you as well, and many of our, 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 our lady ministers in this movement, that you have moved beyond being the first woman minister to just being a very good teacher mentor and we show up regardless of your gender mm. and dr m used to say i don't have to walk around and say i'm a woman you can see you know and i said that's very much reverent on that i could see uh, you know yes. um, so so yes it, it, the propaganda has been that you know behind every good good man you know successful man there's a there's a woman yes we have a woman in the Caribbean now called Mia Mockley. She's the, the, uh, the leader of, in Barbados. Yes. She's a dynamo, regardless of what gender. Yeah. She is just a dynamo, yeah. um, you know, and she's, she's making waves and she's leading Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean um, brilliantly. What a brilliant. blessing. And, and that yes. raises a question for me, you know, because Mia Mockley, is a strong, assertive woman. And she, she does what Terry Cole Whitaker um, advocated in her book. What, what you have to say about me is none of my business. Yes, and she, she, she looks at principle, she looks at policy, and she's an, advo an, an advocate for what? For principle. And um, it then makes me think about some of us who may have had those ideas in the boardrooms and they've been usurped by others, men for the most part. Do we, if, if, if it's not in our nature, I mean, and of course we were having this conversation earlier about personality type. It, it would not be in my nature to say, but hold on, that was my idea. I'm going to like maybe many of our women, as we say, suck it up. But then it, it acts to, it, it, it affects my psyche. You know, another time where I'm put down, where I'm ignored, where I'm, and so how do we now, without being aggressive and, you know, you know, be the bully to say, well, this is mine, I want it. How do we allow the, that, that feminine to, to, we can, to still, for us to still be strong, assertive? How do we use this, these, these principles to allow us to really shine and, and, and be the lights in our universe? 
I think I don't, first of all, mine is not a mountaintop teaching. Mm. You know, I'm I'm down in the trenches in the, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm in life like for real dealing with it. You know, we're duking it out sometimes. So so I'm not pretending that I have everyone's answers and just mm, you know wonderful. lean in to hear this. I am just working it out all the time. And I have a couple of thoughts around this, Sandy. One is. I think it's okay for women to be at a point to say, whoa, hold it, hold, wait, hold it. Let's not another feather. That was my idea. That was just what I said. So I don't think we, we have to in owning our feminine space and our femininity that we cannot tell just the bald faced truth mm. with fervor. You know, mm. I think there are those moments when you just have to say, whoa, everybody out the pool, this is not, this is not the way we're going to play this. And I think we have to trust ourselves enough, love ourselves enough to, to see ourselves as whole, as perfect and complete, just as we are. But well, one of the things I think that, that appealed to me about this answer, my teaching, was the fact that it honors that, what that you just said. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of your gender, mm -hmm. um, but I think it is a space in which mm -hmm. um, our teaching is a is a is a container in which people of all genders can can learn their validity and that they're valid, valuable, and authentic members of the the human race, and that your femininity is honored as well as um, however you see yourself and you wish to be you wish to present yourself. You know, I think that that's true. And what Sandy said earlier in quoting Terry Cole Whitaker, you know, just her her famous quote of what you think of me is none of my business is, yes. is that that that's, I think, so important for women to get because we are so often raised in ways where what others think about us is more important than who we are and what we Absolutely. think about ourselves. A Absolutely. So just that message is is a pass for freedom. Yep. You know, it's a get out of the jail of being everything to everybody in yes, the indeed. way that they want us to be. It's, yes. it's that freedom. It's that invitation to freedom where using the principles, I grow ever more comfortable, ever more trusting of my personal truth and my personal truth oh, is not for people to like me. I'm so grateful that I do not have the disease to please. I'm so <laughs> grateful that, that, that that's never been a part of my, of my personality. And I'm so grateful. I got some other stuff. It's not, it just, you know, I didn't just pour, but that's not one of mine. So, so when, when she said that, and that's also the title of one of her books, it you know, I resonated with that. Mm. And, and it, mm. it, it helped me still and still does at times, because sometimes it might feel like it's easier just to, you know, to, to make my life work addressing what people are thinking about me, especially as a minister. Exactly. Sometimes that's a little scary place for me because, yes. because a thing about ministry can often be, especially, I think, um, Ooh, do not, don't wear to chat out with this, but I think especially for black folks in church, yeah. whether you call it spiritual center, a temple or church or whatever, I think there really is something about expectations. And again, I say to my folks, this is not a mountaintop teaching. Do not run up in here and try to prop me up I on some set of stuff at all. Exactly. Because it won't, it won't work. I am human and I'm working this out. And that's what I think makes me most valuable to our community is that it's real. You know, I can holler from the valley. <laughs> Look out, y'all. Go the other way. You know yeah, what I exactly. mean? From the mountaintop, it's, it's, it's a different kind of teaching. But I got lots of valley moments and creek moments and alley moments <laughs> and all the stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, we have, a, we have a, a question from practitioner Carol Campbell, who is tuning in on Facebook. She says, from a science of mind perspective, 
how would you advise women who are traditionally and consistently called on to be the caregiver of everyone but ourselves? Hmm. But, uh, but yourselves, yeah. Thank you for your question, Carol. First of all, I have to say, I would not give any advice. Mm. I, I would not. I just don't, I don't have any advice around that. What I would coach to is the realization of that individuals. There's no way to, you know, like do group coaching for women, for the entire gender set. But for an individual who is struggling in a situation, I would encourage that individual to look and discern and grow comfortable with the truth of their being. You know, who are you and, and what's working? What can you trust about you? Mm. And begin more and more to lead with that. Begin more and more to rely on that, to trust that, to have that be your way of being in the world rather than some of the ways that we were taught because it's not as if you know i come from um well i'm not revealing my my age i certainly come from a time when, <laughs> when women were were broadly trained the same and so much of the work our work was even if you were going to be educated it would be during that education be looking for a husband because you were not, women were not perceived to be whole without a husband. All right, that brings me to, my, to a question that I wanted to ask you. And, and uh, you know, it has been said that a, a lot of people come to our teaching, to the science of mind and spirit, because, because they're looking for a soulmate, a, a partner. And in my experience, that's mostly women. Um, what would you say to that? I didn't know that was going on. I should get in on it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What my sense is, Reverend John, my my sense is that folks come seeking whatever they think is missing. Yeah. That's my sense. Missing and they don't know quite what. Right. There are so many other places to go. When folks come here, they have tuned into that there's something there for me, that there's going to be a key to the puzzle of my life working more in alignment with what I desire. Yes. I love what you said about not giving any advice, because, of course, that's um, great. But (laughs) but (laughs) yeah, it's it's a challenge because in our culture, in in the Caribbean and in Jamaica, we have been grown up, and it may be true too, um, you know, on the North American continent and in Europe. We're, we're, but, but coming out of the, the, the whole experience of slavery, when we were always told what to do, how to be, um, it's deeply ingrained, I believe in. Okay. It's improving and we're growing out of That's it. True. But mm-hmm. we always are looking to somebody else to give us the answer. Yes. And... Um, you know, a lot of times our women to hold the wisdom and, and, and we come to them asking them for the answers. Yes. We disrespect them, you know, and think, you know, you, you're yeah. only here to cook and clean and have my children and um, be the perfect mother, wife and whatever. But, but give me a wisdom anyhow, because, mm-hmm. you know, you have been there and done that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this teaching is it is a it is a science of mind. It's a science of self responsibility. Yes, it is. Me, yes, it I is. have to take responsibility. Yes. And I love it when you said, you know, I was down on my face in the, you know, in the mud. Yeah. Nobody pushed me there. You never said, you know, somebody did it to me. I was there in a depression, and something, a spark, in the middle of the night when you couldn't sleep, right. listening to, to. to Terry Somebody. Cole Whitaker. Mm-hmm. That's and right. There you go. You there are you go. so you are so right. What that that idea of giving advice and and individual students and congregants wanting to you to help the minister to help shoulder the responsibility is a slippery slope. Yep. It's so, no. And it doesn't serve anyone. Send us right. living, moving from that whole pastor thing. To. Right. We all exactly. have responsibility for this for this center, and, and we're going to make it work or not. 
that's where the power is. The power yes. is in self-responsibility and one Absolutely. realizing because, you know, let's say that I pick the person up and I carry them. I'm not, but let's just say for the sake of this example that I pick them up and I carry them and I, you know, drop them off at exactly the right Clean spot. Clean them up and they drop arrive. them off where they want to go. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But if they, you know, it's this whole idea, if you teach a man to uh, t- teach a person to fish, then they can work it out for themselves. And that's what my my prayer is, that that's what we're doing at Heart and Soul. That we are supporting folks in in raising themselves up, you know, not standing on the side saying, you got to do it yourself. It's not that at all, but it is nurturing, supporting, encouraging, so that when one is on the other side, they, they see how they got there. They can yes. tell. They can tell a cogent, coherent story of how I got over. Mm-hmm. Not just you know, that I magically appeared on the other side. Yeah. Wonderful. You know. You know. One of the challenges I believe is we don't believe that we have greatness in us. We don't believe that we are powerful. We have not been. We don't have that orientation. We don't. Um, you know. It, as children, there we, we we are abused. We are given chores to do. Um, I, I don't know about in the US, but here are many of our young girls are pimped out by their mothers because it's an economic, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, it, this is a way to bring money in. Yeah. And so you come out of that experience, you go and you get educated and then you get maybe, and, or not. Um, and I see it in, in with women who are, very nattily dressed and quaffed and so on, who are hurt little girls, you know? And it, how does it come out? It comes out in attacks against other women. It comes out in um, malice and, and, you know, just behavior that, that, that of aggressiveness, because I say women are the worst contenders in, we have a bad reputation in organizations. And so how, how can we, as a, as, a, as a movement, how can we help to hold that, the hand of that little girl and just tell her that she's perfect, whole and complete. She has the power, she has God within her and, 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 and she believes it and can act from that space. How do we do that? You know, Sandy, I believe you're saying it right now, but it's more than telling, it's showing that. I, I, I think that, that the first, kind of leg of the journey in the cultural shift and the social shift is telling. So we get the words first, but we don't believe it in time. If that's all it is, it's just that someone said it, but nothing is different. So my sense is that what must happen is that we must model that. When you say that the kind of reputation that women often hold in organizations and corporations and the like, we started that. That's not a rep that was really given to us by others. We started speaking of each other that way and treating each other that way. And you have to change the narrative. I, yes, absolutely. And the behavior. Because we've 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 gotten better with the narrative, but the behavior requires another level of investment. And I mm. think that that that's the key, that that's where we must begin. And I'm, I tell you, I'm in the alley trying to work it out, you know, with is my behavior really matching where where my heart is in my quiet spiritual practice moments? I mean, if I'm just, if I can just be there, oh, I can change the world. But then, you know, disturb me in the wrong way. And, you know, you don't meet Miss Meditating Dr. Andriette, you meet the one you disturbed. And so it's it's in changing the behavior in ways that we can, that I can be more consistent and I can show up more like the way I really want to be. My heart's desire, if that makes sense. Mm. Yes. Wonderful. Mm. Uh, friends, as you're watching, those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, um, our Temple of Light family, our Heart and Soul family, 
um, you know, questions you might have for um, Dr. Andre, please um, write them in the, in the message and we will pass them on to her. We lo love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, I mean, how do we, we, we have some, we have little girls who are um, coming up around us. We have children who come to our center. And so we are the models, we are the role models we want them we to are. look up to. We are. Yeah. How, and that's tricky. Mm -hmm. That is tricky because you, <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're up in front and the lights are on and all, you're, you're aware that people are watching and, you know, so you got your best face on, you're using <laughs> yeah. your best language and your best response yes. and all of that. And then there are those moments when I think that are the most instructive. When folks see you outside, see us outside of the light, outside mm -hmm. of the intended moments. And that's what really, I think, forms their opinion of, of what's really true, what's really going on here. I think our work, my work, is to, to be ever more consistent in my practice, not my spiritual yes. practice at yes. home. Yes. You know, cloistered. Yes. But my practice in the world, I have, uh, I used to say to my community when we were gathering that on some level, I didn't want them out telling people that they attended Heart and Soul. Because if people couldn't tell, then I don't want them to know. Yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and that's you know about me. It's not just, I'm not just saying it to them that, that if somebody, you know, if, I don't want to say, oh, I'm at heart and soul. And they go, what, you? <laughs> you, know, you know, I saw you doing with the waitress yeah, or, yeah. or the service person or the, you know, the driver or whatever. I just, it's, what can we do in our lives day to day, moment by moment that transforms all of our interactions? You, you, you know, I'm sitting here listening to you and I'm thinking every time you say the name of your center, heart and soul, I think that's the divine feminine. Those are the qualities. You didn't Absolutely. say brains and brawn center. You know, you said heart and soul, which are distinctly for me, uh, yeah. feminine qualities. Absolutely. That's how women approach. Yes. Um, you know, um, Dr. Elma used to um, get criticized, criticized because we <laughs> didn't go out and um, spread the word. Yes, mm -hmm. and say, so, you know, we are here, come to us and so on. She would say, dear, by your, you know, and she would quote the master, by, um, you know, some truth, by your deeds, they will know who you are. Yes, yes by, your, by, by your fruits. By your fruits, yeah. okay. absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. What would you, what advice, oh, well, let me, let me rephrase that. Mm -hmm. let, let, me, uh, let me ask a question and I'll come to, to, to the point that Steve is making. Mm -hmm. um, what would you, how can our men folk um, step up to um, acknowledge the divine feminine even within themselves and to just in their actions and reactions um, appreciate, elevate, support, nurture. You, you're asking that of Dr. Andrea? Yes. Oh, <laughs> That's not a yes. fair question. That's not a fair <laughs> question. We're talking about the divine feminine. Thank you, Reverend John. Let, <laughs> let me just say, my I, I have a thought about it. I don't... It, it, there's a part of me would be, you know, brothers gather together and just tell each other the real truth, because here's what I have heard. Clearly, I don't know because I'm not at the center of those truth circles. But when the <laughs> brothers have shared with me, when the brothers have shared with me that they have come together in truth, there's really not a problem. Once they get past the, the um, posturing, you know what I mean? Once they, once they get past, uh, you know, who's in what and the hierarchy and all of that, when they get to truth, they get there. They don't necessarily call it their feminine and I don't care what they call it, but they're in touch with the truth of their being. My sense is 
that for men, it might, I don't know this for certain, this is just my sense, that it requires the courage and conviction to be all right with the fullness of their being. Oh, they have things, they have interactions and relationships to deal with that I may never fully understand. So I can't, you know, I'm not, I'm not in a position that I can begin telling them or having even sharing any ideas about the how to, but what I know I have seen is the brothers who have taken on and when i say brothers it's it's i'm not speaking uh, i'm not identifying ethnically so but mm-hmm. when when the brothers have come together and shared Whatever. at the level of their soul truth wow they get it the key is to the key is to maintain a charge so to speak to maintain the charge beyond the circle and into the world mm. and practice that. And so I've seen some brothers transform in that way, yeah. but I get that it's, it's hard. I think for sisters, it's a little different. You know, it looks I think like that the, the same kind of breakthrough, but it's it. different. Say it again. I think the sisters can help by also affirming themselves. Yes. Because if, if you know who you are, then when I interact with you, whatever gender I am, I am going to sense and feel and know that here is another human being who knows who they are and what they're about. And then your gender doesn't actually matter after that. You know, Uh, our our assistant minister, Reverend Ann Shan, always says, I don't know what all the fuss is about because when we take off this costume that we're wearing this time around, you're going to be neither male or female. You know, you are just pure consciousness and pure spirit. Yes. And so, you know, get get with it because you yes. know, it, it's really a, a costume <laughs> you're wearing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. That's beautiful. I, I, wanna, I love that. I want to go to the chat. Um, Steve, a most important point. I don't remember. Um, oh, yes. He says, if people can't tell you're a true student, you have work to do. I think this is, this is with reference to um, when you talked about, oh, you know, I go to heart and soul and the response was you. You know, <laughs> if people can't tell by how you are being, mm-hmm. then we do have work to do. Mm-hmm. And then Reverend Anne, you know, bless and your heart. You just let me just her. think, if I can say about this, Sandy, is that sometimes I have to catch myself because I'm not behaving in ways yes. becoming of a heart and soulor. And I'm the founder, but I'm aware of that. And I am willing to do whatever it is I need to do so that I can yes. clean that up. Yes. Wow. And, and so Reverend Elma, Rev, Reverend Elma, she just called my name. Reverend Anne says that um, modeling the talk is how we show up as spirit. Yes. Hopefully. We have to walk the talk. Nice, Reverend Anne. <laughs> nice. And yeah. then we have, um, I hope that I have the name correct, Janet Reg- Reginius La- 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 Lacroix. Lacroix. Yes, she says, any suggestions for an affirmation to support heart and soul into practice? Oh, I love it. I practice any, heart and soul. Any suggestions for, for an affirmation, an affirmation. Oh, an to affirmation. support heart and soul into practice? In other words, to oh. be it, to live it. Oh, that'd be nice to come up with an affirmation. What I'm feeling in my spirit is that it's about trust it's Mm. that i trust my heart in and then i feel like it's ellipses i trust Mm. the guidance of my heart or something in you know in that realm i trust the guidance i trust my inner guidance i follow my heart would be some of the root of that sentence stem, that affirmation. Following my me. heart is the way of my soul. <laughs> oh, that's lovely, Reverend John. That's lovely. Wow. Oh. You know, the time, the time has almost, I mean, I don't know where it goes. We sit and we start to talk. I know we have then, a little surprise, a little surprise sitting right beside. We're beside going to, we're Reverend going Andre, to. Reverend Andre, but I would love to know um, if she notices any difference when we have a run between the, the, the feminine experience in Jamaica and the feminine experience 
um, in the USA. Thank you so much uh, for having me. Ah, and first birthday, welcome. Let me say that this is my beloved Damali Robertson, who is a, Jama a daughter of Jamaica. Yes. And she is a member uh, of Heart and Soul. She's a board member, mm -hmm. as well as a first year practitioner student. That's B O R E G or B O A R D? <laughs> B O A R D. I just wanted to check. I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> I have many board members. <laughs> is that. Yes. Oh, it's such a pleasure to have you, Damali. Yeah. Uh, um, Damali, have you found yeah. any difference between the, 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 the experience here in Jamaica as against experience there? I have found a huge difference. And in a lot of ways, um, I embrace both. It's a both and for me because yes. there is... Not either or either. Yes, there is this uh, conversation that I'm having with myself about patriarchy. And I do find the relationship to be different in Jamaica and in the United States. And I was just in Jamaica and I was just part of a, a huge service for my father. And yes. even within that, I found pieces of patriarchy that I thought to myself, I would like to challenge at some level, but I also embrace and I understand where, where we're coming from um, as a people in that. Mm. Awesome. Profound. Wow. Oh. Wow. So do we have to end, Reverend John? <laughs> um, it's really a commencement. W when we <laughs> sign off, we're, we're beginning another another leg of the journey. Um, yes, well, so. you, you, you know, um, this conversation has been one where, you know, I've brought you, we have brought you out of the pages of Science of Mind magazine. Yes. You know, up live <laughs> and close and personal. And, you know, of course, we'd, we'd, we'd just like to bestow upon you the, the honorary degree of Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I love what you said about this not being a mountaintop ministry, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you from the trenches. I've been there. I've done that. And um, so. And I'm doing the work, too. And I have work to do. I think that is just, yes. you're just, I've just found that really warming to both my heart and soul. And um, mm -hmm. thank you, Reverend Dr. Andre, for just yes. being a part of this, this amazing movement known as the Science of Mind and Spirit. Um, thank you, Reverend John. You're thank a you. real inspiration. Thank you so much. This has and been so a we're going to, we're going to ask Damali to, to pray us out with a, a spiritual mind we, treatment before affirmative we, before prayer. We end, Reverend John, I must share these two affirmations that came up. Um, one from, from Reverend Anne, she says, I express from the fullness of my being and I show up as love and harmony. Ooh, lovely. And second one, um, um, a thing from <laughs> Janet um, LaCroix, La I follow my heart all the way to my soul. Ooh, lovely. Nice. Wow. And follow that's my heart perfect, all the way to my soul. Perfect energy with which to ask you, Damali, to, to do our closing affirmative prayer. Mm. Thank you. It is my delight and my joy to do so. And I invite us to take a deep breath, to go with them, <sighs> to be with this moment. Whew. Mother, Father, God, mm. the masculine and the feminine energy that resides in each and every one of us. Source energy, the life force, infinite potential and possibilities. God, known by many names, the almighty, Yeshua the Christ, Ja Rastafari. We come to you as divine reflections and emanations of God. I speak a word now on behalf of Heart and Soul Center of Light, on behalf of the Temple of Light in Jamaica. And I know that we are joined and unified in the divine and in the sacred. It is a sacred energy that has blessed 
this event, this gathering today. It is this divine energetic that knows all of our names. It is this divine energetic that expresses through us, that has blessed this moment, this gathering, this coming together today. And I bless each and every one of us going forth from this place. Whether we're at home or we're headed somewhere, I send blessings and grace and love. Ooh. And I give thanks for the power of love and the way the power of love moves through each and every one of us now, through our countries, across the globe. The power of love is God. Mm. And for that, I give thanks. Yes. And because I am filled with gratitude for this relationship and this connection between Oakland and Jamaica, I simply let it be. And I give thanks saying, amen. Amen. Ashe. Ashe. Amen. Ashe. And, so and so it beautifully oh. is. Wow. And next time you come, you come, you come to Jamaica, beg you come to the temple I like. I will. <laughs> um, and share your, your radiance with us. Wonderful. I will. Wonderful. I will. Thank you. Reverend Andres, you are that special. Sure. Mm -hmm. It was special. a joy to have you. Yes, we definitely have started something here. And, yeah. you know, yeah. we will definitely keep in touch. Absolutely. Well, you have a Jamaican connection right under your wing. So, yes. There you go. <laughs> Thank Love you and blessings so much. And we bless your dad's journey in the light. Oh, mm -hmm. thank Wonderful. You. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone of you, you uh, on, on Facebook Live. And we look forward to seeing you next time for Lifeline at the end of April. We ha we'll have another special guest and we'll let you know. In the meantime, we do invite you to join us this Sunday morning for Reverend John's message um, at our, on our live stream. And um, of course, if your heart is moved to to, to, to share and, and give of your consciousness, your time, your talent, your treasure, um, and you wish to support our ministry, we do invite you to visit our donate page at templeoflightcsl.org. Thank you so much for your helping us to be a beacon of light in the world. It was our joy to have had you this evening. Reverend Andrette, Damali, love and light and blessings go with you wherever you go. Namaste, Ashe. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.